everyone, my name is Sam and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell notification, and give the video a thumbs up. You also may notice I am beating red because we are having like a heat wave. Not Arizona heat wave, but heat wave for northern Alberta here. And I don't have air conditioning because it's never gotten this hot before, so we just going to deal with it. So. These are all the books that I want to read this month, or I guess not this month, I'm filming it in July, so in August. So the first book that I am so excited to read, and it's probably going to be one of the first few that I read this month, is The Smoke Thieves by Sally Green. Now, I have tried several times to find a way to summarize this, and I don't think that I'm really ever able to, so I think it instead just makes more sense to, like, read the under dust jacket thing. So meet the Smoke Thieves, a shrewd princess whose father is plotting against her, an idealistic soldier turned traitor, a radicalized servant on the quest to avenge his family, a streetwise demon hunter in need of money, a charming thief who has no clue about his true identity. These five young adult lives would never intersect were it not for the stolen bottle of demon smoke. So I'm really excited about this. I like the cover. This is the U.S. cover. I also like the U.K. cover, though. So if I really like it, maybe I'll get the U.K. cover? I've read one of Sally Green's other works before. I didn't like the story itself, but the writing was no issue. So I'm really excited about this, and I'm excited about the size of it. Like, it's a good, hefty-sized book. Then I am definitely getting to Crazy Rich Asians. Within, like, the first two weeks of August, I am rereading it and going to take notes and be ready for the movie. I'm gonna go on opening night. I am so excited for the movie, but I whipped through the for the three books in the series in the past three months, and oh my god, such a good trashy summary, contemporary family drama-y book, and oh, it's just so good. But girl living in New York, she's a professor, she's dating her boyfriend who's also a professor at her school, and then he decides to finally take her home to Singapore, and she shows up and finds out the family is bajillionaires, and they don't really like her. So, drama ensues. As a part of my 2018 goals, I wanted to get to Watchmen, so I'm going to try and do that in the month of August. I did finally get to V for Vendetta a couple months ago, and I got to Wires and Nerves last month, so I think I can do do Watchmen next. I'm really actually curious about this because I've never actually read Watchmen. I know like it's supposed to be super diverse for the 1980s, but it was just kind of weird because like I remember reading V for Vendetta before and I've seen the movie, but I've never seen the Watchmen movie and I've never read this before, which is kind of, kind of interesting. I'm going in blind. I'm really excited. I am so excited to reread this book. Heretics Anonymous by Katie Henry. She's coming to the TBR and Beyond book group in the month of August to have like a chat and I'm going to hardcore fangirl. I absolutely freaking loved this book. It's so, so good and I find it so incredibly interesting that she was able to include I think so much representation without find like it wasn't insulting. I didn't find anything insulting and I mean... I have not read many books that even have characters that are openly atheist, like that identify as atheist. And as someone myself, it's it's like, it's something that's very blatantly obvious when I am that and I live in such a hardcore Christian geographic area. And then I read this and I honestly don't think I've ever read a book where the main character is an open atheist in a contemporary setting and isn't villainized. So... I'm so excited to reread this. It follows our main character. He is so incredibly sarcastic and he, his family keeps moving around for his dad's job. He's really sick and tired of it. He gets shoved, despite being an atheist, into going to a Christian school in this new town. He shows up and is obviously a bit out of water, which was something I really identified with because I had to go to Catholic school too. And with the uniforms and all. And... Uh, sorry, the main character's name is Michael. I don't know if I said that, but he meets uh, a girl in the first day of school and she kind of smack talks one of the nuns about kind of the things that she's teaching about women. And then he talks to her and he's like, oh, I, I didn't realize there was another atheist in the school. And she's like, I'm not, I'm a Catholic. And so it's just this awesome like comparison of like institutional double standards, not just of religion, but just as a whole versus like modern day theology where 
and it's so it's so interesting because I, I have that where, you know, you have these old hardcore people will, that will just abide by anything the church says. So, you know, the current pope will say one thing and the one before him said something the complete opposite. They will just abide by whatever he says. Whereas everyone that I went to school with, even like the like the, the very devout Christians are all for LGBT rights and like legal same sex marriage and adoption and. It's just so, so incredibly interesting to get characters. You also have a gay Jewish boy, and there is... Oh, I'm trying to remember what other rep in there. Oh, I remember. Oh, it's going to bug me. But they join together and find try and expose the school's double standards that they're trying to impose. And it kind of creates a splinter effect through this group, and it kind of shows how they're all tied in. There's a little bit of romance, but so, so much comedy, and it's so well done. There's so many funny one-liners. Highly recommend. So excited to chat with her and to reread this baby. Then I'm going to do my darndest to get to the Fiery Cross in the month of August. This is the fifth. I'm trying to remember the order of them now. I think fifth of the Outlander series. The I honestly remember nothing of this book, so I'm going to go in blind in all honesty. I think it's, I want to say some, like it's about to start the American Civil War. And Jamie kind of gets drawn into it. I want to say I'm not 100% sure. So, yeah. Fiery Cross. I am super, super curious about this one. Orphan Monster Spy by Matt Killen. Killen? 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 What, however you say his name. I'm really excited about this. But it's an Aryan girl in World War II. And she is a spy against the Nazis. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, so she sees her mother killed, I believe it is. And someone recruits her, and she looks Aryan, so she is essentially tasked to infiltrate a boarding school of a bunch of children, or the, the boarding school where a bunch of the Nazis' own children um, work, and she is supposed to befriend one of the daughters of a scientist to get a blueprint of a bomb that they anticipate is being built. So I'm super, super excited about this. I freaking loved A Prisoner of Night and Fog. I'm so trash for, like, why World War II stuff, especially when women are taking these lead roles, because it's always, like, in regular history, we just read about the men. So it's just oh, so interesting, so excited for this. Then I plan on getting to The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I haven't even made myself read the full summary of this, because I feel like I'm already just so hyped for it. But I think my friend Melanie read it really 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 liked it. it was one of her favorite books that she's read this year so I'm even more excited now but I remember the blurb is like uh, she's a peasant she's a student she is a soldier she is a goddess so it's set in uh I want to say Japan but I'm just really excited about that and I have a feeling it has something some sort of historical fiction I'm wondering if it's going to tie into the opium wars or have you know a comparable event happened that is strikingly similar to the opium wars i have a feeling so because poppy normally has a connotation so i'm really excited about that and oh, i love the cover of this book it's so pretty actually really really curious about this one the seven husbands of evelyn hugo by o tiller something i'm sorry i'm totally blanking on the name it was chosen as the book of the month for the TBR and Beyond book group. It was already on my list of things to read, but I've heard nothing but, like, absolute praise for this book. And it's also got LGBTQ rep. So I'm really, really, really interested in this book. I haven't actually read the full summary, but everyone's just like, it's one of the best books I've ever read. So I'm like, all right, I guess I gotta read it. And I guess I'm going in blind on this one. I am finally going to start reading Alan Hamilton's series, Rebel of the Sands. I only have the first book. They did a mid-series cover change, so I was like, I'm going to wait and see if I even like this book, and it's worth putting myself through all the turmoil. If anything, I'd probably just buy them all in paperback, so at least they're consistent covers. But I really, really like this one. It's so pretty. It's all gold. And oh, I just know it's supposed to be in um, a Middle Eastern fairy tale retelling. I'm trying to remember if it actually specifies... All I know is, like, the main character is supposed to be, like, kind of like a gunslinger, sharpshooter, but I think it's set in the Middle East, and she meets someone that helps her do something. I don't know. I know that's super vague, but, I mean, I'll link all these books below in the Goodreads if you're super interested. I'm also going to begin my reread of the Throne of Glass series. Assassin's Blade and the Throne of Glass, the first book, are on my August TBR. The rest will be kind of disseminated through September and October because I am preparing for the release of Kingdom of Ash and actually it hasn't been super long since I've read these all. I marathoned them right before Tower of Dawn came out like well, all within a month so 
it's not super unfresh in my mind, but I just like to like be prepared for the epicness that is going to come in the conclusion. Knock on wood. So Assassin's Blade, Throne of Glass. Also in preparation for the release of Escaping Houdini, I am going to do a reread of Stalking Jack the Ripper this month and then probably Escaping Houdini. No, Hunting Prince Dracula next month. I'm mixing all these title names up. But yeah, so Stalking Jack the Ripper follows our main character. She's a woman in Victorian era during the Jack the Ripper attacks. And she works for her uncle, kind of unofficially, who is a mortician. And she kind of goes on this private detective search and tries to figure out who exactly is Jack the Ripper. And she meets a striking gentleman along the way. Um, he's a character. We'll just leave it at that. But I'm just so excited to revisit this. I remember reading the book the first time and being like, oh, it, was, it was okay. And then read it more when I was in the mood for historical fiction. And I was like, this is amazing. So, and it like made James Patterson Presents imprint like an instant buy for me. So I'm just really excited about this one. And then next month, and then the month after, and then, and then we'll have three of the four books. Oh my god, why is it like a million degrees? I don't even understand how people like in Texas and Arizona survive. It would just melt the floor. I also plan on reading Sanctuary by Karen Licks. That is another author that we're having do a visit in the TBR and Beyond book group. I'm so excited. She's actually, you know, lived, lives, or I, maybe she's moving. I thought I heard somewhere she's moving, maybe. But lived at one point, if not currently, in Alberta, in Southern Alberta. So I'm just really, really excited. It's supposed to be a sci-fi. That's really all I remember about the summary. But I've had a couple friends read the ARC, and they thought it was really good. So I'm just waiting for my pre-order copy to show up, and I'm so excited. So excited. Canadian author and sci-fi. I am super excited. I'm doing my monthly, not monthly, I'm doing my yearly, I think, reread of A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McInnes. This is the first book by this author that I've ever read, and it made her an instant by author. So, I'm just, oh, this, this book is messed up, but it's so good. She has this, like, weird habit of writing books in every genre that somehow have this, like, really strong, important message. So this follows our main character, who is essentially not, I guess forced is the right word, forced into a sane asylum, I guess is the right word, um, an institution because she is unwed and pregnant. And you find out throughout this who is the father and it's kind of messed up and it's almost kind of a revenge story. And it's kind of this story about how all these people in this, put in these situations are put there and like who puts them there and the abuse of a lot of these systems. And she kind of gets rescued by someone and kind of becomes like a detective. It's just really, really interesting. I can't exactly pinpoint what I love about this look so much. It's just so good. I love it. And the cover is really, really cool. I am beyond excited. Now that my copy of The Speaker is in my hands, I'm going to read it this month. The Reader was one of the best books I've read in a really long time. It's so good. And the third and final book in this series, The Storyteller, has come out or is coming out soon i can't remember but i'm just so excited it's this world where books and literacy just don't well traditional literacy don't exist and our main character finds a book and her parents had hit it and her parents have been killed since and they didn't kind of relay all the importance of this and there's so much going on and there's kind of like magic and like so much so much i'm so excited just if you've never read the reader i would just at least try it. It's so good. I also hope to get to The Magicians by Michael Scott. This is the second book in, I think it's called The Alchemist series, or maybe it's The Secrets of the Immortal, Immortal Nicholas Flamel. I don't know. I haven't read the, the summary of this. It's the second book. I read the first book and really, really enjoyed the first book, but it ended in a very interesting way. So I'm very curious to see where it's going to go. But contemporary setting, our two main characters are essentially sucked into this world of magic and they kind of have something that an evil dude needs. So the immortal Nicholas Flamel is trying to kind of save them and protect them, but it turns out they are a part of a prophecy. And I just really enjoyed the first book and I'm so excited to read this one. I also plan on finally attempting The Shadow Queen this month by RJ, sorry, CJ Redwine. This is supposed to be retelling. I think it's a Snow White retelling. I'd have to double check, but yeah, because they're all retellings. Yeah. So I'm just so excited about this now that I've got my Lunar Chronicles retelling all done. I'm really, 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 really excited. 
Second to last, I hope to get to Sweet Black Waves this month by Christina Perez. I honestly don't remember a ton about the summary on this one, but um, not you without me, not me without you. And I know it's supposed to have a killer cliffhanger. Um, two broad kingdoms stand on opposite shores, one with the bloody history between them. Um, or with the bloody history between them. So all I know is like it's a historical fiction and there's supposed to be a female POV. And I'm so excited slash hesitant once people started telling me, like everyone that's read it was like, girl, oh, you're going to need a bottle of wine for the end of this book because you're not going to be okay. It's Jay Kristoff all over again. So I'm really excited slash nervous, but I'm hoping, hoping to get to this one this month. And last but definitely not least, I am hoping, oh, I hope so much that I can get to A Touch of Gold by Annie Sullivan. I received the arc and a finished copy this week. So... I want it it's so bad. It's King Madis retelling with his daughter. And, oh, I'm just so excited. Ugh, this uh, We're also doing this book in TBR and Beyond in, like, a couple months. So if I don't get to it, I'm going to have, like, I'll do it in September. Or I'll do it this month, and if I really love it, then I can read it again for that. So those are all the books I hope to attempt, at least, to read in the month of August. Let me know in the comment section down below what you are reading or if you have read any of these and love them or if you think I need to add any specific book to my TBR. I'd love to know. Make sure to check the description box down below for links to all of these books Goodreads pages as well as links to all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you 